Day one of the winter meetings. Mel, thanks for joining. I'm Sarah Perlman, Masson's very own Mel Ansonin, and, and we're going to go around the MLB and kind of see what's going on. Some things are shaking through. Definitely rumors are hot today. Uh, but let's really get started that John Carlos Stanton went to the Yankees, Otani to the Angels. What's kind of the layout? What are you expecting to see over the next few days, Mel? Well, everybody tries to predict on the first day of the winter meetings and whether <laughs> there's going to be a lot of trades, a lot of moves, a lot of dominoes falling. But the fact that Stanton is now signed with the Yankees and left or moved to the Yankees and left the Marlins and Otani's picked his team, it feels like everything is in line, Sarah, for the dominoes to start falling. I expect and a lot of people expect that there's going to be a lot of moves. This is going to be a busy winter meeting. Sometimes you can have some really boring winter meetings, but this feels like it's shaping up to be a real fast action one simply because of Otani and uh, Stanton getting out of the way. Yeah, John Carl and Stanton to the Yankees. Huge move, and uh, I said yesterday I'm from Miami. It's hilarious. A lot of people were upset about it, and I know the AL East is pretty upset about it. You look at teams like the Orioles and the Rays, and it's going to be really difficult to compete because now that he went to New York, I know the Red Sox are looking for a slugger. What does this say about the AL East and how difficult it's going to be really to compete with these two top players, or excuse me, John Carl Stanton to the Yankees, and now whoever the Red Sox are going to pull out? Well, the Red Sox need a power hitter. They were the only team in, in the American League last year that they didn't have a guy that hit 30 home runs, and they finished last in home runs. So they need a power hitter. Whether they'll get it or not, I don't know. Red Sox, their season there depends on the health of their starting pitching. Yes, they have a lot of good young players. Yes, they got a they they got a bank on Rafael Devers at third base and Andrew Benedetti in left field. Benetendi, excuse me, to uh, to improve. But the Red Sox key is still their pitching, and they're going to be looking for a power bat. The Yankees, everybody knows, the Yankees are back, especially with Stanton. Even without Stanton, the Yankees are back simply because their young players started to grow real quickly. Uh, Aaron Judge, D.D. Gregorius, Starlin Castro did well. They had so many things go right for them. Mm -hmm. So the Yankees are back, there's no question. And then when you add somebody like Stanton, when you have Stanton and Aaron Judge, American League Rookie of the Year, uh, hitting 52 home runs, Stanton hit 59. Boy, that, that lineup is powerful. Throw in Gary Sanchez, the catcher. Uh, the thing you can say about the American League East, the Yankees are back. Yeah, uh, it's tough to say, of yeah. course, covering the Orioles. They now have the National League uh, leading uh, home run hitter and the American League home run hitter <laughs> yeah. uh, from last season, which is just insane. Now, some rumors kind of are starting with Boston Red Sox. J.D. Martinez, Eric Hosmer, Kyle Schwarber. Those are the three sluggers that the Red Sox are interested in getting. Who do you think is the most realistic, knowing they have the money to kind of afford who they want? I think it's, I think it's going to be, I think it could be J.D. Martinez, Eric Hosmer. But Eric Hosmer, Sarah, is the type of guy that they would want because they could use him at first base and they'd let Hanley mm -hmm. Ramirez play DH. Uh, if if Hanley, if they if they if they sign a DH type like JD Martinez, then they could move Hanley to first base. But I think the ideal thing for the Red Sox would be to have Eric Hosmer here to play first base. They've got a good young outfield. They got a strong defensive outfield. And so they're they're set there. But JD Martinez obviously would help. But he'd be more of a DH type, I think, for the Red Sox. So if they're looking for a DH, it could be JD Martinez. If they're looking for someone to play first base, then I think it would be Eric Hosmer. And let's talk about Otani. Of course, he went to the Angels, and it was a really good deal for him. Obviously, they have to pay uh, the Japanese league, but he's on a minor league contract, which is good for a payroll when you go down to think about it. And he could hit. Not only can he pitch. What do you think they got in Otani? Well, it looks like they got a pitcher that can throw 99, 100 miles an hour, and somebody that can hit a lot of home runs with power. But my question is, what what did they get him for? Did they get him to help the rotation or did they get him to help the lineup? And where is he going to play? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure that there's any room for him in the outfield with uh, Upton, uh, Calhoun, and Trout in the outfield. None of those guys are going to sit so that Otani can play. Uh, maybe he plays some first base, but they got a first baseman as well. Albert Pujols is their DH. I think the biggest adjustment for Otani with the Angels, Sarah, is going to be learning to hit in the big leagues. You can't be a pitcher one day on Monday, take Tuesday off, and then bat <laughs> Wednesday and Thursday and expect to be hitting in the big leagues. Uh, so it's going to be a challenge for the Angels manager, Mike Sosha. But they did get an all-around player that could change the game, could set a new trend. On the other hand, I think, I think it's going to be very difficult because where is he going to play and how is he going to get enough at-bats to learn to be a good hitter in the major leagues? Yeah. There's probably no question that he can pitch, but hitting is going to be different. Now, we know a lot of teams went after Otani. That's no secret. But the Orioles in particular didn't seem that they were going after him at all. Actually, yesterday, Dan Duquette said on the MLB Network radio, it wasn't really kind of their style and they weren't going to pay that money to the Japanese League. What's your take on that? Well, yeah, it was a surprise. He said basically that he didn't like the idea of a $20 million posting fee. In the past, the posting fee has been even higher than that. So 
If he's not comfortable with the posting fee, basically probably what he's saying is we can use that money other places. Yeah, we could have probably gotten Otani. We can made a bid for Otani if you're the Orioles. But it might be better to take that $20 million posting fee and and build the pitching staff with depth. They need more than one pitcher in the Orioles rotation. So Dan Duquette's probably saying, ah, you know what, I can spend $20 million in another direction a lot better, a lot better for the team. Yeah, the Orioles need actually three starting, three starting pitchers, excuse me. And we heard today that the Mets are willing to trade Matt Harvey. Could that be a possible guy for the Orioles rotation? Yeah, I think it could. And I think that's what the Orioles are going to have to look at. You're going to have to look at trades. You're going to have to look at minor league free agents. You're going to have to look at free mm -hmm. agents. You're going to have to grow your own. You have to look down every avenue, every street to see where you can find pitching. Pitching is hard to find, even if you need one starter or two. But the Orioles need three plus some depth. So is is there some uh, legs to the Matt Harvey rumor? I would say yes. I think if Dan Duquette is doing his job and if the Mets are doing their job, certainly they've talked about it to see what the price would be, what the parameters would be. So I don't know if it's going to happen, but I think it's a legitimate uh, uh, it's a legitimate speculation. Absolutely, and it's also going to be important for a lot of teams, not just the Orioles uh, and including the Nationals. They need some relievers, and we've seen some relievers go uh, during these winter meetings and over this winter. Uh, let's actually talk about the Cubs got Brandon Morrow. That was a pretty hefty contract. What does that say about other relievers going? Because they've kind of signed and started building their bullpen, are other teams like the Nationals going to step in and try to make some moves now? I think, the, oh, yeah, they need some help. Uh, they've got, they're set with left-handers in their bullpen, but the right-handers, you know, you've got Coda Glover. Is he coming back from injury? Very talented talented, but can he be healthy? Same thing for Sean Kelly. He's been one year left on his contract, but can he can he help in those setup roles to get to Matson and Doolittle at the back of the rotation? I don't know. I think the Nats will be looking for relievers. The good news for the Nats on the relievers front is that there are a ton of relievers on the market, so that could depress the price. They can afford to wait to see what happens, and I think probably that's what they'll do. But as soon as you say that, you just never know what's going to happen with Mike Rizzo. He might pick up a reliever in the next yeah. hour. He might wait another month. Who knows? But Sarah, the thing about relief pitchers this year is that there are a lot of them on the market and as we found out with Gregerson and, and Morrow uh, the price is high it used to be middle relievers were just thrown into that position now you got to pay them big bucks yeah Gregerson two two years 11 million dollars for the Cardinals which is just pretty extravagant especially if he's not going to be there closer yeah exactly as I said though you know 10 years ago 15 years ago middle relievers were never thought of as candidates mm -hmm. to make the all-star team they were always paid minimum wage Middle relievers were guys who couldn't make the rotation or couldn't make the back end. They were just kind of thrown in the back. But now teams are investing in middle relievers, and it, it, it shows the importance of a bullpen and, and, and what teams think they need. I mean, bullpens are just coming yeah. on. They're throwing a lot more innings than they did 10 years ago, 15 years ago, and teams are paying for that now. Yeah, and let's continue around Major League Baseball. Another story that kind of happened today, the Los Angeles Angels and CC Sabathia have kind of talked about uh, signing him to a deal. The Angels are going all out. The fact that they got such a good mm -hmm. offense, they had such a good second half last year, Sarah, and now they got Otani. They got some real buzz going in Anaheim there. So if they're looking at CC Sabathia, what they're saying is we need all the pitching depth we can get. They've got seven or eight starters, but virtually every one of them has an injury history or some kind of bounce back that they need. The Angels rotation over the last couple of years has been pounded with injuries. So it would make sense that they would go after CC Sabathia. Probably a two-year contract. CC Sabathia wants to stay in New York and who that was wouldn't? my fault that was what I was going to ask you don't yeah. you think he wants to stay in New York and don't you think the Yankees want to continue working with CC Sabathia yeah. they do they'd love to have CC he's great but the Angels might offer more money they might have a chance to play closer mm -hmm. to home and uh, the Yankees might be going after somebody a little bit stronger than CC Sabathia they might be willing to go after somebody else on the free agent market so there may or may not be a place for CC in New York even though everybody's saying that's his first choice um, you know, maybe the Angels have a shot at him. And one more headline that kind of happened today earlier. Cardinals and Rockies both pursuing Tampa Bay closer uh, Alex Kalume. Kalume, yeah, he's been a very good closer. 280 ERA in the last couple of years. Tons of saves. Uh, Tampa Bay doesn't necessarily need a closer, but they will they will trade him if they want, if they can, if they can get a good deal. The Cardinals need a closer. R Rosenthal is gone. They're rebuilding their bullpen. Same thing for the Rockies. The Rockies struck gold last year with Greg Holland in their bullpen. The bullpen was key to the Rockies getting to the postseason, so they re they need to rebuild their bullpen. The Cardinals need to rebuild their bullpen. Alex Colomay would be a good choice because 
uh, both teams, the Rockies and the Cardinals, have prospects that the Rays would want. Mel, thank you so much. Now, I know you'll be on uh, with me today, of course, tomorrow and Wednesday, and we'll kind of talk all around Major League Baseball, rumors, trades, et cetera, what's going on. But what's going on with you tonight? I know you have something on Masson. Well, Mid-Atlantic Sports Report is an extra, half, an extra hour tonight, actually, wow. from 5 to 7. So we'll have a lot, of, uh, a lot of the talk and a lot of speculation that's going on in the hallways right behind us, Sarah. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's actually really cool. And we'll show uh. you guys shots of the hallway, kind of who's walking in, who's walking out later today. I'm Sarah Perlman, Mel Anson, and thanks again. Thanks, Sarah. All right, guys. See you later.